Using some of the same techniques that I showed you in the previous video, I've made this. So right now I have these three squares, and that's not very impressive. And if I click and draw, nothing happens right now. But if I click the red, and then I click and draw, now I can draw in red. If I click on the green, and I draw, or I click and hold down and move the mouse, now I can draw in green. And if I click on the blue, now I can draw in blue. Right? And so I've made this using a lot of the same things that I have already showed you. So if we look at the code, which we have over here, in our setup, I've said no stroke. I did shrink the canvas a little bit because I didn't want to have to do math. And dividing 300 by 3 is a whole lot easier than dividing 400 by 3. So I've made three rectangles. That's these. All of this is being done in the setup. So it draws these once and it doesn't draw them again, which can be a little problematic because if I start to move this over here, it actually uh, overlaps a little bit into the, uh, the color space. Uh, but I could play with that a little bit in my X, Y coordinates down here to make sure that doesn't happen. Anyway, it's drawing them one time in the setup, right? Because it's in the setup. So setup happens once only. We know the function draw loop happens again and again, and that's where I've uh, created some interactivity to allow us to paint. Now, of course, I only chose three colors because it's simpler and it's a lot easier for you to see how it works, but you could add in a whole bunch of colors, right? You could mix these around and make a whole lot more squares and add a lot more choices for this. So what I've done is I've made it so that if the mouse is pressed, and mouse X is greater than 100. This is 100 right here. Here's a 100 sort of a line or border. Then it's going to change the stroke weight to be a random value between 10 and 20. That gives us sort of this uh, more of this like painterly style, right? Where it's not always exactly the same size, which I like a little bit better. And it's going to put a point there uh, where the mouse is uh, a little bit up and to the left of the mouse. I think that's a little bit easier to see than I think what's right under the mouse is a little bit harder for people to see where they're painting. And that's just based on kind of how I think users interpret things. Now, if this isn't true, if the mouse is not pressed and the mouse is not greater than this 100 line, then it checks these things. First, it checks if the mouse is less than 100 and if the mouse is less than 100 on the Y axis as well. So it's less than this and it's less than this, then I know you're clicking in the red and it sets the stroke color to be red. If on the next one, we're still less than 100 on the X axis, but on the Y axis, we're greater than 101 and we're less than 200, so between here and here, then it changes the stroke value to be green, right? R, G, B, so full green, F is full, right? Well, <laughs> F doesn't stand for full. But, um, you know, these values, 0 to F, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. F is maximum, right? So F is as much green as it can be. That gives us, you know, this color. So setting the stroke to be that, which, you know, then when we draw, that's the new stroke color. And the last one, if mouse is pressed is true, and X is less than 100, so it's on this side of the X axis, and it's greater than 201, so it's greater than here. I didn't worry about being less than 300 because where else is it gonna be? Like, I mean, I guess they could click down here, right? So if we click down here, does it work? Yeah. Clicking down here still makes it blue, but eh, I don't care. Then the stroke becomes blue, right? So no red, no green, as much blue as possible, right? So that makes the stroke blue. And so then when I draw again, the stroke has not been changed, right? Because I don't have any stroke values in the draw loop, except for when we're clicking somewhere over here, right? So now the stroke is blue. The reason why I put these way up here is because if I put this down here into the draw loop, then what happens is it basically doesn't work, right? So if I click, right? There's no stroke and I can't draw because even though I'm setting the stroke in here, as soon as the draw loop runs again, this no stroke is taking over. If I delete the no stroke, 
It would work, but watch what happens. If I click, now the stroke is right around these. And when I do this, oh, look at that, isn't that fun? And if I choose it to green, now that's also not great. And that is not the effect that I want, right? So that's why I put those all up here inside of the setup function instead of having it inside of this draw loop. When discussing how to make sort of this um, paint program work, right, these stroke values are being saved inside of variables. Basically a place to like store information, which could be words, it could be a number, it could be a color code. So this is being stored here, right? And every time that we run the loop again, this value still exists in that variable. And so when we're coloring here, it's checking what is the current stored color. And that could be red, or if I clicked here, now it would be green that's being stored in that variable, or blue, right? And so it's doing that automatically for us. We're not telling it to store a variable. Us as programmers are not telling it to store them in here. This is a function right here, right? So we've we've been working inside of this draw function and we've been working a little bit inside of this setup function and we've been defining what's in there. Inside of this p5.js library, there is a place where the stroke function is defined and the point function is defined. And when we're doing this, it's pushing this color code through there, which is then doing some different things, which include storing this value in there. So then when it's checking to draw what the stroke color is, it can find that variable. Now we can use variables too. One of the things that I thought would be kind of cool is not just when you move your mouse over a square does it change, but maybe it changes and it stays permanent. It permanently changes, right? And we sort of saw that before with the background issue, but I wanted it to be a little different. Instead of just changing the color, I wanted maybe the square to like sort of like burst into smaller squares. So how can we do that? Because that requires two things. That requires deleting or hiding the original square and then making new smaller squares around it. And that's easy to do when the mouse is over it, but as soon as we take it off, what's gonna happen? So let's play with that idea. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a copy of this so that way I don't ruin my, my previous work. And we'll call this uh, maybe coloring program, right? And now I've got this one here, right? And now I can work with this one without worrying about ruining my other one. So I'll go ahead and just clear these things out. So if we have we have an empty setup function and an empty draw function, and all we have is a create canvas, right? And if I save and refresh, clear canvas. So what I want to do is I want it to draw rectangles, but when I put my mouse over it, uh, the rectangle like explodes or bursts into smaller ones, and then it stays into these smaller ones. Now I'm not really talking animation, like the little cubes aren't going to like fly out, they're just going to like appear a little bit further out than they are, right? As far as animation goes, that's further down the road and we can talk about that later. So I'll do rectangle, right? And uh, for right now I'm just going to have a black one just so we can see that it works. So you can play with colors later. So let's make this at 100 by 100 and we'll make, make it 200 by 200 pixels wide make sure it works okay there it is oh I guess it'll be white just kidding then we need like the smaller versions right so let's say that it's gonna break into like smaller like chunks of like uh, 50 by 50 or something so maybe this one is at 75 75 and it's gonna be 50 by 50 pixels do I like that size eh, yeah it's fine I'm only going to make four of them. You could always make more once we make sure that we know that it's working properly. And this one is, it's going to be on the same y axis, but we're going to change the x value, right? So this will stay 75 and this needs to change. Now right now we have this loading at 25 less than the starting point. This ending point over here is going to be, it's going to be 100 plus the width so 100 plus the width so that's plus 200 so this point should be 300 we want there to be a little bit of overlap right uh, by 25 pixels right so if this is 50 
If this little one is 50 wide and it starts at 75, there's 25 here to get to 100 plus 25 more, right? So this should be 300 minus 25 to get it in a, a parallel point, in a, a mirror imaged point, right? So this will be 275. I save and refresh. That looks good. Now I want down here, one there and one there. I'm actually going to copy and paste these instead of rewriting the whole thing because um, basically I just need these again but down here. So now I just need to change the, the Y value of these two because the X value is already correct because I already, already found those. So if this is um, 100 here and this is 75 then down here would be 275. It's the same thing that we did over here, just on the y-axis instead. So let's try that out. 275, 275, or at least that's my hypothesis. Let's see if it's correct. And it is, except our canvas isn't big enough because I was playing with this 300 canvas because I didn't want to do 400 divided by 3. So let's make that a little bigger and refresh and perfect. Now what I want is I don't want them to both show at the same time. I want it so that when the user puts their mouse over it, it bursts into these little smaller ones and then it stays that way. So that means I need to be using conditionals for checking where their mouse is and I need a variable so that way it actually remembers if they've already put their mouse over it. So first let's do the conditional as far as like where their mouse is. So I'll type if and uh, Adam recognizes right the command right so if I click this it'll sort of set it up for me. So what do I want to be true? I want, I don't want true actually. I want if mouse x is um, greater than or equal to, and it's gonna be 100, right? Because that's the, that's the uh, starting value of that. And then we need two ampersands, and the mouse x is also, less than or equal to 300, right? Because 100 plus 200 is 300. Then, well, we also need to do the Y value, but let's just see if this works first. Then it will make the small ones. It's still gonna draw this on top, but we'll mess with that in a moment. Let's just see if this works first. So I'll save it. Command S to save. And refresh over here. There we go. It worked, right? Now, if we do the else, then it has the regular one, right? So until we put this here, the regular one doesn't draw. So Command S for save, Command R for refresh. So far so good, it's not showing the little ones. As soon as I move my X value to be uh, within the X axis of the square, the little one should show up. So as soon as I move it over this line, there they are. Now you might say, well, you didn't move it over the square, and you're correct, because we only set the X values, we didn't set the Y values. So now I need to add the Y values in there. So I need more ampersands, and this is gonna be mouse Y, and is greater than or equal to 100, because once again, here's that 100 value, right? And then more ampersands, mouse Y is less than or equal to 300, right? Because that's the 100 plus the 200, right? All right, so if we would save it and refresh, no little ones, right? As soon as I put it over the square, little ones, right? Now, neither one is being erased, right? It's just, it has both of them now. So the way that we erase one is we have to redraw the background, right? So here, inside of our draw loop, if we put backgrounds, right? And then in the color, we need to put in my, my background. This background color is from my HTML page, right? It's these sevens that are making that gray. So seven, 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 seven. If I save and I refresh, there we go, it's working. Um, but as soon as I take my mouse off, it reforms, right? And I want it to stay like permanently exploded. So how do I do that? I need to use variables like we talked about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a variable. We can write var to create a variable. And I'm gonna call it 
square one. Now, inside of here, right, inside of, inside of the area where it's checking where the mouse is, I'm going to add a line of code that's going to change the value of square one. Right now, square one actually doesn't have a value at all. We've created it, but we've given it no value. So I'm gonna say that square one is equal to zero. I'm just gonna make it equal zero. Now, if we save this and we refresh over here, we shouldn't see any change, right? Supposedly square one equals zero now, but we don't really know for sure. So what we can do is further down inside of my draw loop still, I can do a print command, right? And inside of here, I can make the square one variable be printed. And if we save and we refresh again, we still don't see anything, right? But that's because if you remember from one of the previous videos, this print command prints to the JavaScript console. So let's refresh and let's open our JavaScript console. And right now you can see this thing down here is just printing undefined like crazy. If I mouse over the square, now we can see it's printing zero like crazy. So the variable changed, right? The square is still not doing what I want it to, but we can see the variable worked. So now we can rethink this bit here. So that way it checks on what the value of the square is and then decides what to draw. So I can delete that and I need to change this around a little bit because now we're not going to have it draw these little squares or this big square depending on where their mouse is. Instead, we're going to have it draw the little squares or the big square depending on if square one is equal to zero or not, right? Which is sort of the same as this, except it becomes permanent, right? So I'm going to make a new if statement, and this is going to be if square one is equal to zero, then I'm gonna do these things. Else, I'm gonna do this, right? I'm gonna delete this out of here, right? Because we don't want it to be drawing the rectangle if the mouse isn't there. We want it to draw the rectangle if the mouse has never been there, which is relying on this square one variable that we've set there. So I can delete that. And now my else is empty, which means I don't need an else. So I can delete the else altogether. And all I need is this if statement followed by these. So if I save command S and I refresh, I mouse over, and it stays perfect right so what it's doing is right now on here this is drawing this rectangle over and over and over again right it's drawing it 30 times per second right now this is not being drawn because square one does not equal zero right right now square one equals nothing right and we can confirm that by putting this print command back in right so if we do square one refresh this we do the show JavaScript console we can see just undefined is being printed like crazy right so square one is not equal to zero so it's drawing this rectangle as soon as I put my mouse over that square those coordinates not actually the square right remember it's, it's actually these coordinates that just so happen to line up with the square perfectly it bursts right because now square one has been made to zero and we can see that down here and since square one is zero it is now drawing these little rectangles instead of this one right and this background is hiding that original square if we got rid of this background up here right it would still work but this square has been drawn right and there is no background being drawn so as soon as i mouse over the little squares are drawn this big square is not being drawn anymore, but it still is shown because we haven't like drawn over it with the background, right? Which is what this does. So that's how you can make that work. So if I want to have a whole bunch of them, then I could make lots of squares, right? And I could make lots of square variables, one for each square. And so that way, when they mouse over all of them, it changes the values and decides which ones to draw, which, I've already done, so if you check this out, you can see all these little squares explode.